Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University. Hi, I'm Nick, and I love Washington's geology. I've been teaching it for 20 years now. Let's hit the highways, visit places you all know, and I can help you see Washington like you've never seen Washington before. Welcome to Central Rocks, Roadside Geology. Hello, welcome to Thorpe, the little town of Thorpe, Washington. Interstate 90 here. These travelers heading over the mountains today going to Seattle. The question we have today that we're working on, did glaciers from those mountains, the, snow, the Cascade Mountains, ever get down this far into the valley and flow all the way to Ellensburg? I live in Ellensburg. I get that question all the time. Did glaciers ever come through town? The answer is no. We're just a few miles west of the Thorpe Fruit and Antique Barn, and that ridge just behind me, that low brown ridge, is the answer. That ridge marks the farthest into this valley that the ice was able to flow. The ice never flowed any closer to Ellensburg than this ridge. And again, we're not even to Thorpe yet. Is it a crazy question? did glaciers ever come into this valley? It's not a crazy question. Mount Stewart, which you can see, that beautiful peak in the distance, is jagged and triangular because alpine ice has done a number on many of those rocks up there. So ice is a major player in most of the history of the Cascade Mountains. But in this particular case, that brown ridge where we're heading next and where these travelers are climbing, marks the end of the ice coming down from the mountains. Let's go to that ridge, see what we can find out. Where are we specifically? We're at milepost 97. On the westbound side, the drivers are climbing the ridge and the ridge is significant because glaciers once upon a time, in fact, 600,000 years ago, flowed down from Snoqualmie Pass, basically right down Interstate 90, past Easton, past Cleellum, past Indian John Rest Area, and got to this point right here. This ridge has a geologic name. It's a glacial moraine. Moraines are linear ridges composed of loose rocks, big and small rocks that were bulldozed down here by the glaciers themselves. So we can imagine 600,000 years ago, a big, beautiful glacier in our frame pushing these rocks down to this ridge, but no closer to Ellensburg than this. We're now up on it. We're on this glacial ridge. Check out what it looks like. A bunch of loose rocks comprising the surface, and it's not just the surface. We can go down tens of vertical feet and just keep pulling out these loose rocks. Let's look at the shapes and sizes. They're not super rounded. They're kind of sub-rounded to sub-angular. I'm not gonna take the time to do it, but if I busted open every one of these guys, pretty much basalt. But every once in a while, you stroke some luck. You get into a lucky terrain, like this rock right over here. Look at the size of this thing. That's a pretty impressive boulder. We're on the ridge, comprising all this poorly sorted rock, and I'm not so sure this is basalt. Got my hammer, let's actually break a little bit off. <laughs> Rhyolite, light colored rocks a rock type that is very, very different from basalt, lava that actually forms up in the high country, up in the high cascades. And that rhyolite somehow got down here in this size. 
Now, how are you going to do that? Let's say you don't even know about the glacial history here, and you're just an amateur out here trying to figure this out. I guess you would think water. And many know that Ice Age floods hit Washington, but that's this landscape 30, 40 miles to the east of us, where we have coolies and other big scale features. Remember now, this is a ridge made out of a bunch of these kinds of rocks. Ice brought it down, an actual flow of glacial ice. This is a glacial erratic, not a flood erratic, but a true glacial erratic. Ice carrying this guy down 40 miles from the crest and dropping it here in the Thorpe area. Looking to the west, towards Kaliellum. Look at these blonde hills. Look at the fact that they're rolling. The hills are rolling. It's bumpy landscape, wouldn't you say? We call that hummocky topography. Hummocky topography, rolling hills. They're rolling hills because they're composed of these loose rocks that the ice was dropping. So when we see the hummocky topography, we imagine glacial ice. We should imagine glacial ice consistent between those two forested ridges and hundreds of vertical feet of ice 600,000 years ago. So where the hummocky topography is located, we imagine ice on top of it. Now, what if we start following the hummocky topography off to the south? You can still see it behind me, can't you? You can see the freeway. We still have this rolling hummocky landscape. We keep going, we keep going, it's still hummocky, we've got glacial erratics. Ah, and then something different. Not at the skyline, but that blonde linear ridge that's in the low country, do you see it? That's the moraine. That's the terminal moraine of this glacier, and it is a perfect marker for where the edge of the ice used to be. Now, how far into the valley did the ice go? Let's follow our hummocky terrain to the east. Still got it? Still got it? Oh, but we've got a big change. Suddenly we drop off from those blonde hummocky ridges, including the moraine, and we get into these green fields that are topographically lower and importantly, super flat. Valley floor, floodplain type stuff. No hint of glaciation whatsoever. And those flat green fields continue all the way through the rest of Kittitas Valley. All right, so let's recap what we've done today. What was the question? Did glaciers ever get to Ellensburg? Did they get far enough into the Kittitas Valley to really affect things? The answer was no. The evidence was we have a beautiful moraine, a glacial moraine, a distinct ridge that marks the ancient edge of the ice. In fact, let's try this. A glacial moraine is analogous to a crime scene with a dead body. The police come into the apartment, they find the dead body. Before they haul the body off to the morgue, what do they do? They take out their chalk and they make an outline of the body, then haul the body off to the morgue. Glacial moraines are like the chalk line. Our glacier is gone. The body's been hauled off to the morgue. But we've got the line, we've got the chalk line marking the ancient edge of that ice. Not only do we have the moraine, we've got poorly sorted rocks, many including glacial erratics, and our change from hummocky topography to perfectly flat landscapes of central Kittitas County. Do you buy it? I genuinely hope so. Evidence of glacial activity in the upper Kittitas County. Thanks for joining us today. We'll look for you next time. Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University.